I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You notice how Paul, he begins his command by issuing a prohibitive imperative. He issues a command by acknowledging the negative. I tell everyone not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. You know, I thought about something as I, I read that this week and, and studied it. Why does Paul have to begin his command with a negative? He said, Paul, be positive. And Paul begins it with a negative. Why does he have to begin with a negative? Don't, don't think of yourself more highly. I think I know exactly why he begins it with a negative. You want to know the natural progression of self-perception? The natural progression of self-perception is toward arrogance. It is not towards humility. You don't arrive at humility, humility passively. Meaning, you don't just arrive at humility, wake up one day and think, Oh, Lord, I'm a, a sinner. Lord, I'm nothing before you. You don't just arrive there on accident. That's not a passive action that just happens to you. The natural trajectory of human perception is toward arrogance. So Paul says, as you are floating up, just go ahead and bring yourself down for a moment. Let's not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, but here's the positive. But, on the contrary, he uses the strongest adversative particle. He says, but, to think how? To think with sober, with clear, rational judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. How do we think of ourselves more highly than we ought to? I, I've got two main ways that that seemingly manifests itself in the local church. You could think of specific examples of these expressions, but I'm just going to go ahead and populate your imagination with these two main expressions of arrogance in the local church. First is this. When you make yourself a constant priority. When you make yourself a constant priority come to church and what you're thinking is, how does this make me feel? Do I enjoy the atmosphere in this room? Do I enjoy the temperature? Do I enjoy the chair? Do I enjoy the pew? Do I enjoy the carpet? Do I enjoy the sermon? Did I think the sermon was too long? What is that? That is making self a constant priority. It's all about me. It's all about what I'm receiving here. It's all about how I am perceiving everything that's going on. It's about me. And that has plagued, that has plagued American Christianity because we have brought our consumerism into the church. And we think that the customer is always right. Friend, you're not a customer. You are a covenant member of the local church. Not a customer. We don't go to the help desk and say, I want this, this, and this, and then we get our way. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. You may say, well, I didn't like the worship music today. That's okay. We weren't worshiping you. We were worshiping Jesus. But when we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, guess what? We make ourselves a constant priority. People make themselves a constant priority in their own home. They make themselves a constant priority at their job and in the local church. It ought not be so, brothers. It ought not be so. By the mercies of God, Paul says, I appeal to you. By the mercies of God. Meaning God restrained his hand of destruction. And now you're free. It's not about what we deserve. If, if I got what I deserve, I've said it to you a million times. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell. I don't want to make myself a priority. At that point, I'm Lord. 
Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the one we worship. Does it matter to Jesus? What does Jesus think about this? How is the Lord perceiving our song? How is the Lord perceiving my heart? How is the Lord receiving my worship? Is it a sweet sound in his ear? Is my sacrifice of worship a sweet smell in his nostrils? Is God pleased with me? And then I realized, yes, God is pleased with me, not because of what I did, but because of what he did through Jesus. His blood covers me and I'm right with God today. Praise God. That's the right attitude. That's making Jesus the priority where he ought to be. But that's the first manifestation of an arrogant mindset, thinking too highly of oneself. The second manifestation, and they're not just two, it's not just limited. Our time is only limited. The second is seeing others with condescension. Seeing others with condescension. I think that's the second most often uh, form of arrogance expressed in the local church. We look at people and say, well, if those were my kids, if those were my kids, they wouldn't act like that. Really? You want to take them for a day? I'd be glad to get all the help I can get. Well, if that was my spouse, I wouldn't do that. If that was my home, if if that was my Sunday school class, I wouldn't teach it like that. Really? We need more Sunday school teachers, too. We do. Well, if I was running that ministry, glad to have you. Come on, help. We think too highly of ourselves when we look down our nose at other people. And, And we think about what they need to improve. And we think about what they need to fix. It's not about what they need to fix. We're all sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I know you got problems. I got problems too. I, I, I'm here. I'm ready to burst. That's, that was my reaction when Seth asked how you feel when you're ready to come in the room. I said, ready to burst. Ready to burst. Filled up with the word of God. And I'm ready for what God's word's going to do to me. And I'm glad that you get to take part in that. I'm glad that you get to feed off of that too. But I, I'm, I'm here to, to say, say, God, what do you want me to do? How can I be a living sacrifice to you now? And how can I help my brothers and sisters be living sacrifices before you? We ought not be looking down our noses at each other. We ought to be seeking to help each other. We ought to be seeking to help each other.